Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Terra Nova Tech and I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing, sexy looking music player using Kinter. Uh, actually, it's a particular subset of Kinter called Custom Kinter. And the great thing about this is it's it's variable to your uh, Windows 11 machine, meaning if you switch it to light mode, it will switch your application to light mode as well. And dark mode, as you can see, dark mode is there. So this is the finished product right here. So we're going to hit play and get some music. Um, so it's very basic. We get an album cover, we get the title, play, forward, reverse, volume, and down below we have a progress bar that I know it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of a long song, but uh, we get we get that. And uh, you can adjust the volume like so, louder or quieter, and we can switch songs just like that, and we can adjust the volume accordingly. Pretty slick, if you ask me. So there you go, let's dive right into it. We're gonna start from scratch. Uh, we're gonna go over the dependencies and everything you need to create this right now. And if you wanna skip ahead and just start playing with the code, I will have the code available on my GitHub uh, as well. So let's close out of this. Let's open up a new Visual Studio Code project and we're gonna create a new folder. So we're gonna do open folder wherever you want. I have a Python projects directory that I like to work out of. And we're going to do new folder and we're going to say video one. You can name it whatever you want, but we're going to select that folder and start from scratch. We're going to create a new file, call it main.py or whatever you want. And we're going to import a bunch of stuff here. So uh, I'll do all the imports and then we'll talk about how to install them after. But I'm going to do import kinter like that. We're going to import uh, custom kinter. We're gonna import Pygame for the mixer. And we're gonna do from pillow, import image and image TK like this, like that, capital T. Um, we're gonna do from threading. This is important um, because it's gonna crash your GUI if you run music in the background unless you thread it. Um, we're gonna import time. So we can do our progress bar and we can import math. Actually, I don't think we need time anymore. I don't think I'm using, yeah, I am using time. Okay, but only one function, so it's fine. So if you don't know how to install these, uh, what I would recommend is just pulling open a uh, Google search um, and do like how to install Kinter like this. And you'll see it's a pip install. Um, shows you how to install TK for this one. And then what you do is you can uh, run this. Um, you can run it with just the import. Uh, a lot of people like to print hi or hello world to make sure that it's printing and running without any errors. Um, but you can also run pip freeze in here. And this will tell you all the dependencies that are installed. Uh, obviously, virtual environments are going to be better. I'm not doing it in a virtual environment currently. That's just how I like to do things for right now. Um, if I was doing this on a server or something, I would do a virtual environment, but I know what's installed on my machine and I like it this way, so I'm gonna keep it. But basically you just go down this list and do all of that for all of that. With uh, exceptions to cu custom Kinter, I'm gonna show you that because it's a very new library. So I'm gonna link the GitHub in my YouTube video down below. You can click on the link and come right here to custom Kinter and you can, sh you can see all the stuff that you can do with it. So basically it's like an overlay of Kinter um, that you use the back end of Kinter to render these objects onto the screen. And uh, as you can see, it is just, it's just so sexy. All of these things are just so good. Um, and I've been playing around with it for a little while, wanted to do a project with it, and this is what I landed on. So um, here we go. It's going to be the sexiest music player Kinter project on YouTube. I guarantee it, at least for now, until someone uh, does something with custom Kinter. <laughs> but anyway... Um, so, sweet. So we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna we're gonna paste these, which are basically on um, their uh, first site, like their little um, application that you can copy and paste and, and play around with it. Uh, basically, this sets the um, entire Kinter project to your system default. Um, so you can set it light or dark uh, mode, or you can do system, which will copy the system. But that's what we want, just so if the user is in light mode, their application is also in light mode, vice versa. And then we can set the default theme to blue. 
You can play around with this too. Dark blue, green, whatever you want. Um, I've been playing around with blue. I just kind of like the way it looks. So there we are. So we're going to paste those in just the way they are like that. And with any Kinter project, we're going to do the same root equals instead of TK though, we're going to do custom Kinter. So I'm going to come right down here and we're going to do custom Kinter dot CTK. This is a little different because typically what I do is root equals TK like that. And then I do a root dot main loop, um, root dot main loop down here if I can spell correctly and then that creates the uh, that creates our sort of like canvas GUI but um, as you can see here there's pretty much no difference except that it renders a, um, a, a kinter box that is uh, mimicking your system defaults now so that's all that is so now we have our main loop so I'm going to give us plenty of room here and all the code that we put in between the root and the main loop um, or the root declaration and the main loop will be rendered inside the GUI and then vice versa anything above it uh, is rendered outside the GUI so outside the GUI we can um, well, actually let's just keep it let's just keep all this stuff in it we're gonna do root dot title and we're gonna name this thing whatever you want um, music player works good and uh, we can do a root dot geometry and pass in a string version of the geometry that we want. I found that 400 by 480 looks kind of nice. So if we run that, that's our 400 by 480 uh, screen. And I think this is, by the way, Y and X. Um, a lot of people were very confused in my <laughs> my uh, uh, TikTok video as to why when I changed the Y value, the X got longer. It's because this is backwards <laughs> I don't know why they did it like that that's just how it is um, and then we're gonna initialize uh, our Pygame mixer this is important to do before you run any mixer stuff or else it will just throw an error so we're gonna do Pygame dot mixer and then we're gonna initialize it like this okay now we're gonna create a few folders in here we're gonna have um, we're gonna have images and then we're gonna create a new folder called music now I'll have um, a sample music, um, I'll upload this to GitHub and I'll have some sample music in there, but I'm not going to put all of it on there, um, maybe just one one song and one image uh, in, into GitHub. But uh, you'll see when we build this project out, it's, it's fairly easy um, to just map these. So uh, we're going to map these right now, and what we're going to do for the sake of time, I'm just going to paste these in. It, they're just two lists um, pointing to the music directory and the name of the WAV. Um, same here and same here, and then same here, same here, same here. So for simpli for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to paste this in, but feel free to add in your own JPEGs and music and everything here. And if you're downloading it off GitHub, you'll already have some of these things. So um, we are going to put in these files so I've got some images here that I got from unsplash they're just kind of default pictures um, nothing special but anyway we're gonna paste them into uh, our images directory and then we're gonna do the same with music um, the music I got offline um, I think it was just like a free uh, royalty free song thing so we're just gonna put that in there and uh, if any of you know, I don't know the version of Python that you're running with. I'm on 3.9.13, but basically um, I found that the .mp3 format was crashing the program and .wav wasn't. It was a DLL error, so I'm going to leave it at that, just use .wav for now. But if you want to play around with .mp3, uh, feel free to do that on your own. We're just going to show .wav here. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be adding some buttons and filling our screen up with some things here so first thing we're going to do is the play button uh, so we'll call that play button like this whoops and we'll do the custom kinter dot c t k button like that has to be the capital c t and b there it's just that's how they do it and then we'll put master as the root of the program and then we will say the text is equal to play and we will say the command is equal to and we can just set this to a function called play music that has not been created yet each time we create a button we're going to create a function up here to do the thing so we're going to do play music 
and then pass for now. So it, it's happy and will actually run. Then we'll go down below here and we will uh, go ahead and place this and we'll do a rel x of, um, and these, these numbers I've just happened to just figure out while I was building the program. So um, if you're building this from scratch or something else, you might you know have to play around with some numbers here, but uh, as long as you're following along, um, you should be okay. So we'll do an anchor of kinter dot center like this and that should do it. Let's see what this looks like when we run it. <clears throat> and you can see that we got a play button. And when we press it, nothing happens. Of course, if we print here, uh, play, then when we run our program, it will play or print play in the terminal like that. See, beautiful, cool. So let's close that and we're gonna move on to the next button, which will be skip forward. So I just call this skip underscore F uh, because I'm lazy and I don't like to type it out. And I'm just going to copy all of this code here and paste it and then change the stuff. Um, except this is not a, <clears throat> uh, well, it is a button actually. So never mind. Forget what I was just saying. <laughs> it's going to be the back um, symbol here, which I'm just using uh, just a symbol on your keyboard. Uh, you could you could call this back if you want, but I kind of like the small buttons. So, and then we'll call this button.place. And we're going to change the values to uh, 7 on the x, or actually we'd want to keep the x the, yeah, I suppose 7, 7. It doesn't really matter, actually. I think uh, having the anchor.center will keep it aligned, so let's just run that and see what happens. Okay, yeah. Uh, but we do want to change the command to skip forward. And... We'll create that function up here. Define, skip forward, pass. And we want to pass in a width of two so we can keep it small. We'll see what that looks like. Beautiful. Um, this is actually, since this is skip forward, this is the other way around like that. Yep. And there we go. I think that's good. Yeah, so skip forward will be on the right, and then we'll have skip back on the left. So we'll just copy all of this, paste it in, change this to B, change the symbol, change this function, uh, skip back, whoops, define it, pass, and then we'll change this to, well, y will be the same, but then we'll move this over to the left, 0.3, and we'll see what that looks like. There you go. Play, back, forward, and we can pass stuff into them up here. So this is looking good, sweet. Next thing we're gonna do is a slider. This will be our volume control, so we can just call this slider, and I'm gonna, whoops, I meant to put that down below here, like that. We're just going to copy this, paste it, and change this from a button to CTK slider, like that. Uh, master's still going to be root, but all of this can go away. We're going to put in new values here. So for slider, we're going to say a from value, um, like this, 0, and we're going to say 2 equals one. And uh, the reason we're doing zero to one is because when you do play sound, um, that is, and, and you adjust the volume, it specifically says in, um, or not play sound, uh, um, Pygame uh, Mixer, uh, it specifically says in the documentation that it's a value between zero and one. So I had this at like zero and a hundred to start, but anything over one would be max volume. So you just simply change that to zero and one and you're good. So we can say the command is equal to volume volume and we can create that function up here to make the program happy define volume pass and uh, let's see we can do width is equal to I had found that 210 looked pretty nice um, I kind of played around with it um, what's happening here there's no indentation and there you go uh, we haven't packed it in the screen or anything, so let's do slider dot 
place. We're going to anchor center, but we're going to change the rel X and rel Y from 0.5 and 0.78. Don't ask me why that value is that thing. It's just that's where it looks nice. So uh, let's see. Getting an argument uh, error here, I think. Uh, that we have to pass in vol or uh, value here. Um, this is one of those things that, like, with the button dot binds, it asks for it passes in a variable. Yeah, it is okay. And then we can print um, that value to the terminal if we want. So we can take a look at that slider and the values between zero and one. As you can see, it is a float in most cases, um, but the mixer doesn't seem to mind too much about that. Um, of course, if you have larger values between this and one, or like you know, between zero and a hundred, there'll be less floats, I think, um, just just by average. But uh, like I said, Mixer doesn't really care that there's uh, uh, repeating numbers in there. I think it might round up on its own or something. So cool. Um, the next thing we're going to do is the progress bar, and this one's a little complicated, so I'm just going to leave it sort of as a blank thing for a little while, but we'll circle back to it. So this is going to be custom kinter dot ctk progress bar. And by the way, uh, if you are wondering where I'm getting all of these, um, they're all in the documentation for custom kinter. Uh, if you scroll down to the home page and hit documentation, all of these on the right are the widgets available to you, and so we're working with sliders, switches, entries, progress bar. And I just went to this progress bar and looked at the uh, arguments that I could pass in and what they do. And they give you a little example down here that you can paste in as a test. Um, I always, uh, in my projects, I always like to come in here and create a test.py um, just, for, just for playing around with things if you want. And uh, you can come into your main and even import all of this stuff that you have there and uh, and play around with it. So I, uh, I encourage you to do that. Um, if you're testing around with it, uh, it's a good idea. Let me just get rid of this because uh, I don't want to I don't want to do that right now. Um, but anyway, yeah, check out the documentation. It's really cool, very easy to read and very, very easy to follow. So um, we're gonna say our master is the root and we are going to... Uh, do progress color because that was the I just wanted to change the color of it so I came in here copied that come in here paste it and of course if you start typing it it will it'll if your IDE is doing it properly it will uh, like if I did zero and then started typing it out I think it should I, should, I swear it auto filled it but I guess not maybe I, maybe I'm crazy I don't know but anyway <laughs> um I went online and check, I just did a color picker. So um, color picker. And uh, you can just choose a color. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. But I found that this value looked quite nice. So it's like a kind of like a Spotify-ish green. I said kind of like, not exactly like Spotify, so please don't sue me, Spotify. <laughs> and you can just pass that hex value right in there. You can declare that up here and paste it in, but that's the only place I use that color, so whatever. Um, and then we're going to say our border width um, is equal to uh, dot one, even though I don't think that actually does anything. Um, I think I was playing around with that earlier, but it didn't end up doing anything. So let, let's just 86 it for clarity's sake. Um, I'm, I'm actually certain that does nothing, so... We come in here and do progress dot place and we can do a rel x equals and then i had 0.5 and rel y equals 0.85 these are just values that i messed around with and anchor equals kinter you you guessed it dot center and let's run that and take a look there you go so we've got a progress bar down below like i said it's going to stay just static like this for now uh, until we uh, work on it and figure that all out. So, um, cool. Now we've got pretty much everything in there. Um, we're going to do some stuff with Pillow, but we're not going to pass in the album cover until we're calling that function. So let's do the easy stuff first. So first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to paste this in because it's a doozy, is the volume. So this is actually a Pi game setting so if you come into pygame and look at their documentation you can just set the volume to a, vo uh, a value and as you saw in that print 
when we move the slider, it changes the value um, on the fly. So if we just if we just ask it to, to update the volume value by that slider, then it will update that value each time we move the slider. See? So if I move it in this direction, it's updating that value constantly. So there's nothing else that we need to do there. That is done and ready to go. So I'm going to comment this out so it doesn't uh, add any extra stuff to the program. But that will actually change the volume of the music, as you'll see. All right, so moving on, we're going to do um, threading. So we're going to talk about threading a little bit. If I just passed in play music, uh, the mixer... Uh, load and play of the song then it would uh, it would freeze the program and to to combat that we have to do this thing called threading so if you don't know what threading is I would highly recommend looking into the documentation for it but basically it allows for simultaneous things um, not simultaneous but like in tandem with each other uh, I can't think of the exact name but I think you get the idea so uh, all we're going to do is we're just going to call t1, which is a variable, equals thread like this. And then we're going to say our target equals progress. And what this does is we're targeting a function with this, OK? And we haven't created the function yet. We're going to do it right above it. So we're going to define progress. Whoops, I meant to paste progress, not that. And in progress, we're going to specify a few things. So we're going to say pygame dot mixer dot sound. And we're going to pass in uh, an F string of the list of sounds that we have. So we're going to say list or so list of songs, sounds, list of songs. And we're going to set that value to the index N which will be a global variable that we'll put in play music. So we're going to set global, and we're going to say n. Whoops, why did you autocomplete? Global n, and n is going to be uh, up here. So we'll put this, I guess, below here. So what we're doing, uh, let, me, let me sort of update this, and then I'll give you the scoop on what's happening with n. Um, <laughs> And uh, let's see, am I setting a global on anything else? I don't think I am. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I am. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. So um, basically, the threading is going to run, and it's going to target progress. And then progress is going to extract the song that's currently playing. So this is sort of our way of saying what is currently there and n is keeping track of that so if we're talking about n equals zero then the song that we're on is the search and then this is going to thread that song to the background basically not exactly but i think you get the idea so we're going to say the song length is equal to a dot get length and the reason we're doing this is to get the songs um time length and it's in milliseconds so all i do is times three here um this is actually technically incorrect i don't think it's the full song i just couldn't get the math quite right so if you want to take a look at that that would be superb um and then we're going to say for i in range zero through and we're going to math dot ceiling this this is where our math comes into play because uh as as you might imagine, uh, songs, when you read its length, um, it is uh, almost always a float. So we're going to ceiling that. If you don't know what ceiling is, it basically just rounds up. Just rounds up a number, and you're good to go. And then we're going to time.sleep. And we're updating the progress bar here, just FYI. Um, and we're going to say 0.3. So this is how often the progress bar gets updated. Any faster, I mean, it seems to run OK. But I think 0.3 is a pretty good, you know, it doesn't look too choppy. Uh, I'll show you once we get it fully working. I'll adjust this, and uh, and we can take a look at that together. And then we're going to finally uh, update the progress bar. So we're going to say progress dot, or progress bar, rather. Nope, don't want the capital. Progress bar dot set. And then we're going to say pygame dot 
mixer dot music dot get position and then divide it by this crazy number and the reason we're doing that is because when you call get position on pygame.mixer.music it puts it in i think milliseconds and so when we divide by that um and it moves up it just it ends up working out again i can show you that in a little bit but just trust the process i promise it'll make some some sort of sense by the time we're done with it um and uh, and then we'll be good so threading we're going to do t1.start to invoke it like that and then it's targeting progress okay cool and we're going to come come down to play music and we've already set our glo global variable but we're going to call threading here to invoke that because we have nothing invoking this except for when we hit play so basically the way it goes is you hit play and then it invokes threading the threading invokes progress and it threads the progress bar to update in the background of the GUI. So it, because basically the GUI is just one gigantic while loop. And um, when you thread it, basically you, you get your while loop GUI application, but in tandem with it, you get the updated progress bar. You can't have both. It's like putting a while loop inside a while loop. It breaks everything. It's not good for your computer, but threading solves that issue. So that's my rant and uh, stick it to it. <laughs> So we're going to say that the current song is equal to n. And then we're going to say if n is greater than 2, because we have three positions. Again, this is not a great way to code it because it is very static. But this is just how it works for now. You can mess around with the code if you want. Song name, whoops, song name, we're going to set equal to the list of songs indexing that end position which is zero to start and increases up with an n plus equals one at the at the bottom and then we're going to do a few pi game things here we're going to do pi game dot mixer dot music dot load if you've never worked at pi game this might look crazy but this is pretty normal <laughs> and then we're going to uh, basically do this um which i guess you know we could actually just pass in the song name like that I just realized and I didn't want I don't know why I didn't do that before but there you go and then we can do pygame.mixer.music.play and we're going to say loops equals zero and finally pygame.mixer.music.setvolume we're going to set a initial volume of 0.5 because that just happens to be the starting point of the custom Kinter uh, progress bar. So that's just a happy little accident. Um, you could set, I think this volume is set to max in Pygame if you don't specify a set volume, but there you go. And then we're going to call a function here that doesn't exist. We're going to say get album cover. And we're going to pass in a few values. We're going to pass in the song name. And we're going to pass in N. And we're going to declare this up above the progress. And we're going to define. And then we're going to put in our passed in values. Uh, we can just rename them the same. It doesn't really matter. Song name and N. Okay. And then we're going to do... So I'm just going to paste this in because it's quite a lot. Um, but basically, I, I hate describing this because it hurts my head every single time I do it. And I've been working with Pillow now for like two years. But you do a bunch of stuff to the image. You crop it. You resize it. You open it. You resize it. You turn it into a photo image. You make it a label. And then you load that label and you place it. And somehow the picture ends up on the screen. <laughs> I don't really know why that is. But uh, that's just how Pillow works. So um, if you want to look into Pillow's documentation for the explanation on that, you are certainly more than welcome to. I'll have all the links down below. Um, so I have a stripped string here. String equals, and then we're going to strip uh, some of the text off of. We're basically rendering this when we get the album cover down below it. Um, so I want to get just the end. So uh, basically, since we have a static um, file uh, here, uh, 
number. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to be cutting 5 off of everything. Um, except I think I have the 6 position, so I'm not really sure why that is. Maybe there's just a space when you do a file extension. But basically, we're going to do song name, and then we're going to do 6 to the end like that. Okay, and actually we could do 6 to the negative 3. I think that'll... we'll see what that does. Um, or not negative 3. Yeah, negative 3 index. Yeah. Um, song name, or label rather. We're basically just creating the label now in a regular Kinter label. Label. And we'll say that the text is equal to the stripped string. And we'll set the background equal to the same as the background as the Kinter frame, which is just all twos, two, three, four, five, six. And the foreground will make white, else it will be black if we don't. And then we can place this in our uh, in our root. So we can do rel x equals 0.4 and a rel y equals 0.6, just like that. Now we have a few things here that aren't getting updated, like progress bar. Let me see why that is. Um, progress bar. Did I name that progress bar down here? I did not. So that would be why. Cool. Let's see what we get. It's not going to do a whole lot of anything, really. So we've got a... Oh, my F string is missing some stuff. You probably caught that as soon as I typed it out if you're watching this on YouTube. And I still messed up. <laughs> Let's go. That goes on the other side. There we go. Cool. So we hit play, and looks like we get an album cover. And as you can hear, we've got some music. And look at that, it does strip away the, uh, I think I need to do one more negative index there, unless I'm crazy. Right now, pretty much nothing happens. But if we hit play again, you'll notice it will invoke the second song. Um, and that is because when we hit play, we're invoking threading, which is invoking progress. So we've basically got this chain event going on here. Um, I am well aware of that, and I did not fix it, but it's pretty easily fixable. I just didn't feel like doing it because uh, this project took a lo little longer than I thought it was going to. So uh, you can fix it if you want. Um, it's all you. <laughs> but basically, I think we're almost done here. Um, I th think we are good there. We got the album cover. We just have to do skip forward and skip back. So I kind of cheated on this a little bit. As you noticed, when we hit play, it went to the next song. And that's because it indexes the list and just keeps going and going. Once it hits two, it sets end to zero, and then starts over. It keeps looping through. So I cheated, and uh, instead of doing like a proper skip forward, I literally just mapped it to play music. <laughs> so that actually works as a skip ahead. So if we start playing, and we skip ahead, now the actual button works, as you can see there. Um, and then for skip back, what we do is we globalize n to get it, and then we say n minus equals 2, because we're setting the value back to. Um, the reason that we set it back to is because when you hit play, it, it already invokes it by 1, so n's logic is always 1 ahead of where you actually think it is. Like when you hit play, you'd think it would be at the first position because it started at zero, but it's actually already at the second position. So we go back two to go back one, and then we uh, we call play music again um, because we're we're basically calling n again into the regular play music function. So when we go back, as you'll see, we hit play, and then we go forward one. We go back to the search. And if I had that at minus one, it would do nothing. So, or minus equals one. Um, I think that is basically it. It's under 100 lines of code. Um, as you noticed, there is a slight issue, and that is the title here. First of all, it has period, so I want to get rid of that. Uh, 
Why are you still playing? There you go. <laughs> Uh, so let's do minus four. See, that'll probably get rid of it. There you go. But you'll notice that the labels bleed over each other. And that's because the logic for that is literally, um, if I do open with paint, um, basically what's happening is it's drawing the, uh, label on on the screen and then unless we tell it to go away um, it's going to just draw another one so and then it's just gonna draw another one but there's background so it's actually not exactly like this bad but you get the idea it's drawing on the screen and it's never actually killing anything on the the screen and uh, there is a way around that you could um, you could get a W info children and grab the items in the root, or you could create your own frame and pack it in the frame and clear the frame. Um, again, it was one of those things that I saw and was like, uh, I, you know, I just don't want to sit there and add like 20 more lines of code to it to fix it. Um, this is sort of just a, a brainstorm idea. Can I do it? Can I make it look good uh, kind of project? But uh, this is all yours, guys. If you want to check out my GitHub and just grab the code, paste it in, and start making all these fixes that I'm talking about, or just turn it into your own little project, go for it. It's all yours. If you have any questions, drop them in the YouTube video below. I try to read them all. I get notifications on them. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, let me know if you, there's any other projects that you guys want me to do. Uh, I think this is a really cool and fun project to to do and learn. So. Um, yeah, let me know, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.